Hey everybody, school is in session. The subject of the day is a model 92 Maytag multimotor. Single cylinder, hit and miss by way of ignition interruption. The reason for this lesson is the amount of comments and the problems that Maytag owners seems to have with their ignition. On the onset, if I may say, if you do not have a good ignition coil, then all of the adjustments in the world will not improve the ignition. You must have a ignition coil in operating condition. Also, the points, if they are worn out, and they do wear out, then you need to replace the contacts. Can be done. The, the it's starting, let's go basic. Let's start with the flywheel. We're going to get to the points, but let's start at the flywheel. They are, flywheels in general are all the same, no difference, except this flywheel right here, this flywheel is different. I'm not going to introduce the difference right now i just want you to be what well, you can be doing your homework why would i say this flywheel model 92 why would i make the statement that this flywheel is different from all of the rest of them all of the rest of them are pretty much the same they will be casting differences uh you know a little minor minor most of them are casting differences that particular one right there is quite a bit different this 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 thing right here y'all seen that before and all that is is the center out of one of these flywheels that was broken beyond use and i just turned it into lathe to make this show and tell we, we you will see this again when we are adjusting the points you will see this but the way this thing operates, it's very simple. In, in, in the concept, it, it has a stop. It's one piece governor uh, uh, arm. It has a stop made into it. The reason this thing works is because of the weight. The, the uh, centrifugal force of the engine when it's a running this wants to to fly outwards centrifugal force at its basics so that's that's all they are to that it in any time that you're working on these flywheels break it down to this point now this thing this this centerpiece right here it's metal iron this is aluminum all will be that way I have seen these right here to be brass uh, uh, I don't know why, but when you break one down to this point, run a tap in all holes. The gasket is behind this coupling part here. Uh, another difference that you will find in these flywheels, uh, pr about the only difference other than the one being com a little bit different, is the cover plate that goes here. Some of them will have a, a, the screw goes in straight in, and the other one will have a boss on the cover plate, and the screw will go in straight. They are not interchangeable. Now, the question is, should I take that flywheel ring out there? Yes, by all means. Now this one right here was corroded so bad that the, the boats going through yonder, the boats going through there were, right here, were corroded so bad I couldn't get them off, so I cut them off with a chisel. You get them out of there, however how you want to. The reason is, is you want to put this in electrolysis. That needs to be clean. Electrical contact. I got all the boats out of there. And you say, oh, I better mark it. 
well if you want to do it but it's not necessary the reason to remove this is because this if you have one that's in this condition you can get by with not moving it it's pretty clean and all but if you have one that's rusted like this then you do need to remove that and remove the rust behind the ring and, and the and the housing. Just get her out of there. Now, and that's what the ring looks like once you get it out of there. See how bad it's rusted? Now we will clean that up, and uh, I have put these in electrolysis, but I do find that you can clean them up just good enough without putting them in electrolysis, and they do have magnetism. The first thing you're going to say is, well, you didn't mark that which is the north and the south. Actually, it don't make any difference. If you take like 20 of these flywheels, if you go buy 20 engines and you bring them to your workshop and you take them all apart and you check the polarity on on the on this basically is just a horseshoe magnet. You check the polarity here and here and they will not be the same. I, I never pay attention to that personally, and I never have any problem. And if you study magnetism, uh, you will understand why that you would not have a problem with the magnet orientation. But anyways, we got that out of there. Uh, I do have, I got several of these. Now, I did go through and, and I do mark them, which is the north and the south, just so that I can... When I, when I stack them up for storage, I can put all of the souths together and all of the norths. And uh, rather than have a north and a south opposing each other. Now, some, and, and I kind of agree that you do need a keeper. If you're going to store this, it actually, I think, retains its magnetism much better. A, a horseshoe magnet really does, but I think in the, even what this is made out of, the material that this does aid in uh, protect, uh, saving the magnetism that you do have there. But this will be cleaned up. This happens to be a 1936, and, and it is kind of, it will be, we, we will discuss this particular flywheel later. The the, the 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 subject of this 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 lesson is the governor. Kind of a governor setting is on its own. Now you will read in some of the publications that there that they is a measurement here. Now I've never saw that measurement any anything that Maytag produced, but I have found out that. Engines that I build and run myself, I prefer a little bit more uh, a movement than what you see right there.